Is it time? Yes, it is. Hey guys, Colton Taka here on Sonic and OK KO Fnatic 2020 here, bringing to you part 8 of the 2020 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Now, uh, yeah, this is part 8, and um, part 7 was the previous part I did yesterday, and um, I took a, I, I had to show you the two tutorials on the Lifetime Planner and the budget creating on Microsoft Money 2004. So we're going to take a look at creating an investment account and balancing an account to a paper statement for, the, you know, th those are the two tutorials we'll take a look at to show you guys. So let's log on to my account and get ready. Let's go to my computer. All right, so we clicked on my computer, and let's see if we can go into the C drive to to go into the the Microsoft Money files. You know the the tutorials that we'll take a look at. So I just want to tell you all that um, you know um, I'm I'm almost at like 1,400 subscribers. Hopefully, if I reach that amount of subscribers, I'll do a 1,400 subscriber special. Because I mean, although my channel name, I mean, I mean although my chat, although my channel subscriber count says 1400, you know, exactly 1400. For some reason, my subscriber count says 1.39k subscribers still. I, I don't know why. It's just probably a glitch. I mean, I do have 1400 subscribers. They would have changed the saying to 1.4k subscribers. That's what it would have said. But anyway, um, with that being said, it's time for us to, uh, find the, find the tutorials that I'm going to be playing for you guys. Oh, crap. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Come on, click on that. All right. I don't know why the computer is being a little slow today. I mean, it's not really as slow as it usually would be, but, um... Alright, Microsoft Money, Media, AV Help, and of course, we need to click on 11RI. Now let's get the lights turned off before we start. All right, let's wait for the tutorial to open up, and we will get ready. Just, let's just, let's see what happens. All right, so, we're already like three minutes in, and we need to see when this when this tutorial is going to show up any second. I hope it I hope it shows up soon. Cuz I have to show you viewers that tutorial. Wait, why is the door opening? Oh. Sorry, that, for some reason I just heard I just heard the door open. I don't I don't, what what are you doing? I'm trying to make a video. Oh, my goodness. Someone's messing with the door. I, I don't know what's going on. Uh as I was saying, um, at, at least the tutorial isn't shown while this is happening. He stopped touching the door and making a video. Oh my gosh. Guys, guys, give me a second, please. Sorry about this, viewers. For some reason, uh, there was, there was some noise coming from upstairs. Um, I thought someone was messing with the door, but, um, I guess not. But I just want to say, that, um, I finally got this up now. It's time to play the create an investment account tutorial on Microsoft Money 2004, so let's play it. Here we go. We got our quarterly statement in the mail today from our broker, Ferguson and Bardell. How do we handle this in Microsoft Money? We need to set up a separate investment account for each statement we get. So let's create one for Ferguson and Bardell. It'll hold all the individual investments we have with them, like the stocks and mutual funds. So, we create one investment account for each broker we work with, and then we track our individual investments within that account. That's right. Let's create the new account together. 
Starting on the Accounts and Bills menu, let's click Account Setup. Okay, now we choose Add a New Account. We type the broker's name here, Ferguson and Bardell. Choose Investment Account. Let's call it Ferguson and Bardell Investment to distinguish it from our retirement account there. Right. That's important for keeping our tax information straight. And we'll add our investments later. Okay. So now we need to enter the total amount we have invested with this broker. What does the statement say? Uh, here we go. $23,936. Of course, this is probably already out of date, but an estimate is all we need here. Money will correct the balance for us later when we add each investment. I'm stuck on this one. We have cash in our account with Ferguson and Bardell? Yeah, almost all investment accounts have at least some cash transactions. Like when we deposit a check, or when investments pay a dividend. Money sets up a special cash transaction section for these activities. Our statement says we have $125 in our cash account. Well, that was easy. Wait a minute. Are the funds in our money market also considered a cash account? No. We'll put our money market in as its own investment when we're ready to do that. Okay. So you click Finish, and now here's our account. To see any cash-related activity, we'd click Cash Transactions. But why is our account empty? Uh, because it's brand new, and we haven't added any of our individual investments yet. When we're ready, we can click here to add them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next one, which... um. The next tutorial is going to be on balancing an account to a paper statement. So let's just get that tutorial opened up and let's check it out. All right, here we go. Charlie, we got our bank statement in the mail today. Since our account is in Microsoft Money now, shouldn't we balance the two? I want to make sure they match. Good idea. It won't take much time either because Money makes balancing our account so simple. Let's do it now then. First, we open the account we want to balance, and then we click Balance This Account over here. Sounds like a good start. We type in the ending date from our statement, the ending balance. And fill in the rest if we have service charges or interest. This looks like a detailed bank statement, with our deposits up here and our checks down here. These are the unreconciled transactions that have yet to be cleared. So what's this information in the left pane? These are the steps that guide us through the balancing process. First, we mark transactions and money that have cleared the bank. Every time we clear a transaction, these numbers change. When we get this difference down to zero, we'll know we're balanced. To start comparing, we can set this page to look more like our bank statement. Oh, I see. We just go up here to view and choose the group deposits then checks withdrawals view because that's the format of our statement. Now it'll be easy to compare our statement against our information in money. But in our check register, we would just mark an X for each transaction that had cleared the bank. How do we do this on the computer? We use this column called C. This is where we mark transactions that have cleared. Oh, I get it. So let's start clearing. The statement shows that there is a deposit for $1,216.82 on December 1st. Here it is. When I click the C column for those checks, money marks them C for cleared. There's another deposit for $1,016.44 on December 8th. Got it. Now for withdrawals. The statement shows that checks 1634 to 1648 have all cleared. Here they are. Okay, they're all cleared. What are those payments marked E? E means they're electronic transactions that have already cleared the bank. When I downloaded our account information from the bank's website the other day, Money automatically updated the status of these transactions. Looks like someone made a mistake entering the amount for this Contoso Limited check. They don't match. Can we fix it? Oh, sure we can. Just click the transaction, click Edit Here, and then correct the number over here. Perfect. Take a look at this. This shows what we've marked as cleared. I see. And this section tells us the difference between what we've cleared so far and the statement ending balance. The numbers change every time we clear a transaction. Money keeps a running total as we work. When the difference is zero, our account is balanced. But we're still off by 30 cents. And we can take care of that in the third and final step. Let's click Next. If we don't balance out to zero, we can either go back and look for the discrepancy, use Auto Reconcile, 
or just make an adjustment. Because we're not likely to lose any sleep over 30 cents, we'll just adjust the balance. Great. See, all the C's and E's have now turned to R's. So this means our transactions are reconciled and our account is balanced. Now our information in money matches the bank's information. Okay, so on the next part of the walkthrough, we're going to take a look at entering an investment transaction and reducing our debts. So anyway, um, we're going to be... Let's, let's time to shut down the computer. This is a pretty quick part to do, so um, let's just turn off the computer. And we will go get the lights turned back on, so let's go do that. Okay, there we go. I turned the lights back on, and now it's time to get the computer shut down. All right. All right, so that's going to conclude part eight of the 2020 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Stay tuned next time for part nine. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OKKO OK for 2020 signing off. Peace out, everybody. Have a great time.